If you have been in any way following the development of Questcraft throughout the last few months, you'd know that the last few updates were pretty large, and with that came some pretty large performance improvements. However, today, thanks to the Questcraft team, I get to show you an early look at the biggest Questcraft update to date. So what is up everyone? I'm Mystical, and today I'm going to be showing you what the Questcraft team have been working on in the background for the last few months, and what you will get to try out tomorrow. Yes, this update releases tomorrow at 3pm BST for you guys to enjoy. So let's jump right in. In case you don't know what Questcraft is yet, Questcraft is an unofficial but official version of Minecraft that you can install onto your quest. What do I mean by this? Well, Questcraft is a mod for Minecraft, allowing you to run Minecraft Java Edition directly on your quest. And this is a pretty big deal, as it's basically the full PC version of Minecraft that you can run right there on your quest. That means you get to install mods and other things alongside that, and join PC servers as well. Well, that's if the server allows for VR players to join in. It's got full motion support, and did I mention it runs entirely standalone? It's very, very impressive. But of course, running Minecraft PC Edition on a quest fully standalone comes with its own set of problems, and the Questcraft team has been working really hard to fix those problems. And that's why today I'm so happy to be able to bring you Questcraft 4.0. Let's jump right into the changelog, as this one is pretty long. So I've been sent a pretty extensive changelog here, and I'm going to read directly from it so that I don't miss anything. First of all, they have successfully added the mod manager, which allows you to install or delete mods inside the launcher itself. More features will be coming soon in a separate update, which are shown inside that menu as coming soon. They've also redesigned the launcher with a custom cozy cabin room done by their builders, Philadan Seuss and Necromancer LN, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced those. They have improved the performance and load times, this being one of the most important updates for most of you guys, and they have added complete mod support outside of the two mods that they tested, which are Distant Horizons and Immersive Portals, which will be ported soon. They have fixed a huge amount of bugs, so many that they can't even remember, and they have fixed game UI bugs, the world generation freezing, black game loads, etc. This is one of those things that is going to be noticed instantly by you guys. They have switched to the normal Minecraft color space, probably after so many people complained that there was something wrong with the color space that they were using, and they have made the game download only before starting, instead of while logging in. And this, again, is a pretty massive fix for those of you that had the problem of the game files not downloading while you were trying to sign in. That was a pretty big issue, I do remember. They have added left-handed mode in VR settings, and you must restart the game to apply this, but for those of you that are left-handed, you now finally have a mode for it, which should hopefully make the game easier to play for you guys. They have also added a built-in clock in the environment, because lol, and a lot more, which hopefully we will get to see when we jump into the game. However, I do also have a sneak peek for you guys that I asked them if I'm allowed to mention, and they said absolutely. And this is going to make a lot of you guys hyped. Remember, we're running this on a standalone headset, and you will never believe what they have successfully launched. They were able to get shaders working. Although it's slow for now, it's not optimized whatsoever for it for now, but they were actually successfully able to get shaders working on the standalone quest. They're also considering adding FSR or Qualcomm's new Snapdragon game super resolution, which I will have a video about tomorrow. It's actually something that has just come out like yesterday and it would improve game performance drastically. And also just in general, the way the game looks. This will hopefully come out in their 4.1 performance patch alongside other performance improvements. So while 4.0 is a massive update, we get a glimpse at more massive performance improvements in the future. I have also been told that currently with V53 on the quest, in case you're running that, there's a memory leak. They are still looking into what causes the memory leak with meta. So if you've been playing Questcraft recently and you're on V53, you might notice performance has been a little bit draggy. That's just because of the new meta release that has that memory leak. But enough blabbering on, let me show you guys how to install this brand new update so that you can enjoy it when it releases tomorrow. First things first, will require either a computer or an Android phone, and you will require developer mode enabled on your Quest. If you have installed Questcraft in the past, this is just like installing the other version. However, you will want to uninstall the old version so that you don't have any 
issues going forward. If this is your first time installing QuestCraft onto your Quest, once again, download SideQuest onto your computer from the SideQuest website, which I will leave a link to down below, or install it on your an Android phone using the Google Play Store. Unfortunately, iPhones are not supported here. So first of all, let me show you the PC method. Once you have installed SideQuest successfully and have developer mode enabled, launch SideQuest on your computer. Then make sure your headset is turned on and plug your Quest into your computer just like so. I'm actually so happy that this still works after yesterday. If you look at your controllers. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. And then in the top left of SideQuest, it will show you that your quest has been successfully connected. If it's saying that it's unauthorized here, you might need to accept a dialogue inside your quest. Then inside SideQuest, you will want to search up QuestCraft. And once you find QuestCraft, you will want to click download app sideload. This will install the QuestCraft app onto your Quest. And that is how simple it is. Once you have installed QuestCraft onto your Quest, you can now jump into your headset, go into all apps in the top right, head up to unknown sources. And once you click on unknown sources, you should see QuestCraft on the top of the list. Now let me show you how you do this with your phone. It's much of the same. Once you have downloaded SideQuest onto your phone from the Google Play Store, you will want to connect your Quest to your phone using a USB Type-C to USB Type-C cable. Once again, you might need to accept a dialogue inside your Quest if this is the first time you're plugging your Quest into your phone. Accept any dialogues that might show up on your phone during this process and click always in case it asks you whether you want to open SideQuest when your Quest is connected. Then once everything is connected, search up SideQuest on your phone and then click download app sideload. Once you have done this, the QuestCraft app will be sideloaded from your phone onto your Quest. And there you go. And in case you have SideQuest on your Quest itself, that's also an option. You can just open up SideQuest on your Quest, search up for QuestCraft and install it from there. That is definitely the easiest method. However, not everyone has side quests installed on their quest. So that's why I usually leave this method to last. Now let's jump into the game and see what the difference truly is. If you're firing up the game for the first time, QuestCraft will ask you for a bunch of permissions. So make sure to grant it access to those, including the microphone, as the game is voice chat compatible. Once you have done this, you will be thrown right into that brand new home environment. And can I just say everything here feels a lot snappier already. The game launched a lot quicker for me than it normally would, and everything is really, really smooth inside this environment, with the massive screen in front of me where I can sign in. Once you have looked around and are ready to log into the game, press on sign in. This will give you the link, microsoft.com forward slash link, and you will need to open this on a different device, like a computer or a phone. Then type in the code that it's giving you on the screen and sign in to a Microsoft account that has Minecraft Java purchased. Follow the steps to sign in on your computer or phone, and then once you have signed in, go back to the quest. Press sign in again, and this should now throw you into the game. And as you can see here, this is the promised mod manager, which seems to be working flawlessly. I just searched up a mod to see if it's working. And as you can see here, it shows up right away. Clicking on the mod, you can then click download to add it to your instance. Now, you do need to run the game at least once in order to be able to add these mods. So let's jump back into the main menu, select 1.19.3 and press play. And as you can see, the instances are now downloading into the bottom right, so everything seems to be working really well. First thing I noticed jumping into the game is that I think it loads quite a bit faster. It's also quite a bit smoother when per se generating a world. It doesn't throw me into a black screen and it doesn't kick me out of the game. It just loads. Yes, it does take a while still. I mean, we're generating this on a Snapdragon processor, but the world generation is there. You can see it and you're not just stuck in a black screen. So the performance improvement is certainly there. Actually jumping into the world shows us even more of that performance improvement. However, what you will also instantly notice is the hiccups. These are unfortunately created by the memory leak. If you're not on V53, you theoretically speaking shouldn't be getting these. This is similar to a memory leak in a computer. While the game itself runs a lot smoother than it used to, showing the performance improvements that the Questcraft team has been working on, these hiccups unfortunately make it kind of annoying. As I said, the game in itself does run a lot smoother. You can see this between the hiccups, which sometimes don't even appear here. But from time to time, there are these sharp lag spikes that appear out of nowhere. And this is indicative of a memory leak, which is exactly what I was told. 
I do, however, see all the improvements that they were talking about. As mentioned earlier, between these lag spikes, there is certainly quite a bit more performance in the game. It does seem to run a lot smoother, and I almost feel like it would be running at the native 90 FPS that the Quest Pro has. However, unfortunately, because of those lag spikes, it does make it kind of difficult to show. But the game in itself does perform a lot better, which is exactly what I was hoping for. So props to the Questcraft team. If you guys can manage to work with Meta and fix that memory leak, that would be absolutely incredible, as you have truly smoothened out this game and made it perfectly playable, which is incredibly, incredibly impressive. And loading on the performance mods that we talked about in previous videos, you guys can make this perform even better. So let's run into the conclusion. So there you have it, Questcraft 4.0. Better performance, fixed color space, fixed bugs, a nice cozy home, and tons more. And if you're not on V53, you're actually going to have an incredibly pleasant experience. So props to the Questcraft team, you guys have done an incredible job, and this project has come so, so far from the very beginning. I mean, I still remember at the very beginning when everyone was just so hyped that this exists to begin with, and it was still playable then, now it is incredibly playable. I still, to this day, I'm not entirely certain how you guys managed to do it, but I am so, so happy that you did. Every time I think about this project, I think about how much the VR community is truly involved with the community. I mean, if a company doesn't give us something, the VR community will. It's truly incredible. Here we have it. Mojang couldn't give it to us, so the Questcraft team did. But that is going to be it for today's video. If you guys liked it, please do leave a like. If you disliked it, I guess the button works too. But let me know why down below. If you guys are not yet part of our community, check out our Discord and check out our Reddit down below, where I want to see you posting your spicy memes. And I'll also leave the Questcraft Discord down below in case you guys want to join that. Thank you so, so much to all the lovely names going off to my right. Those guys are my Patreons and they are helping me out so, so much right now. So much love. And as usual, if you guys want to be notified about future content coming up on the channel daily, make sure to smack the subscribe button with your forehead, dig my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.